Feministas are now leading political affairs in both the US and Latin America. Latin America specifically is leading the numbers of female heads in government than any other area globally in modern days. Today on Unapologetic, we're gonna shout out all these badass women, what they're doing, and why they're ahead of the game. Shout out to Obama for getting with the program when it comes to currency. We now know that we can expect the U.S. to feature a woman on its money in 2020. Pero, in 1998, Costa Rica put Emma Campo Alvarado, an educator, and recognized for her contributions to pedagogy and teaching on the currency of 10,000 colones. In 2010, my homegirl Rahia Frida Kahlo also got recognized and appeared on the 500 peso. Then in 2012, former First Lady of Argentina, Eva Perón, widely known as her nickname Evita, made her debut on the current 100 peso bill. While I'm super grateful to hear that the United States has finally shown us mujeres some love on future currency, I can't help but point out how awesome Latin America has been for their 75 years of forward-thinking moves on this very political symbolism, money. Quite admirable, right, mujeres? It was not until the 20th century that injustices began to switch around, so much so that the 20th century was called the century of the woman. In the late half of the 19th century, there were three main areas of feminist discussions, suffrage, protective labor laws, and access to education, all things paving for Latin America's fair share of female presidents such as Brazil, Costa Rica, and Argentina. You may say that this happened partially due to the 1980s social movements and of the women's organizations that emerged within them. Ironically though, women today in Latin America are far from having achieved political equality with men, but there is much greater awareness of the problems entailed in their exclusion and discrimination, and that's key. Take Dolores Huerta, former Marxist guerrilla fighting for women's rights in one of the most patriarchal countries in the world, El Salvador. Huerta is not only a labor leader and civil rights activist, but also a huge champion for women's issues and ethnic diversities. What is even more courageous about the women is her leading such controversial issues on behalf of women in a country known for being the most dangerous country in the world. According to the Thomas Reuters Foundation, El Salvador has the highest rate in teenage pregnancy and the highest rate of femicide. Femicide is a crime involving the violence and deliberate killing of a woman. In contrast, the U.S. is leading the conversation in lower teenage pregnancy than ever before amongst Black and Latinx women. Maria Contreras Sweet, originally from Jalisco, Mexico, became the administrator of the Small Business Administration. She is the first Latina to hold that position. Her honorable work towards helping young Latinas is what makes Contreras Sweet so influential and powerful. Contreras Sweet is the founding president of Hispanics Organized for Political Equality, also known as HOPE. Its goal is to provide political education for Hispanic women so that they can improve the communities in which they live. And Sonia Sotomayor became the first Latina to become part of the U.S. Supreme Court in May of 2009. She made history as the first Hispanic and only the third woman to make it to the nation's highest court. Sotomayor believes that in life, especially in her work, she must remain fair. She says, it is very important when you fail to recognize that you have to stay impartial. That's what the nature of my job is. I have to unhook myself from my emotional responses and try to stay within my unemotional objective persona. So how do we continue to see more placement of women candidates in political affairs? For one, we need to change the quota system in Latin America. This is another form of affirmative action where every country decides the minimum number of women they need in order to look like they're being fair to us feministas. Basically, how much access do these machista men think we deserve as far as political positions are concerned? Well, the answer is it's up to us voters to continue promoting women candidates. That's why we want to shout out Rosaria Dawson, who has not only been empowering the Latinx community through the Lower East Side Girls Club, but also co-founded Voto Latino. Their primary aim is to encourage young Latinx to register to vote and become more politically involved in the U.S. Women are slowly taking over the political sphere where it mostly counts, policy. Let's continue to be unapologetic and get our foot in the door and our voices heard. Feministas, there's no stopping us now.